Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through the industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Sherlyn Starkey. She's an award-winning consultation communications consultant, and she's a social media expert. Welcome to the show, Sherlyn. Hey, AJ. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. And I forgot to add, you are a very prolific host of the 50 Women Over 50 podcast too. And that's a great one, especially for gaining a lot of insights exactly about all the issues that you talk about. So Thank firstly, you. Sherlyn will be talking about the latest social media trends that people may want to understand at this point in time. One uses social media in one way or the other. So as we just entered into 2023 a few days back, what should a common person as an individual, as a consultant, as a small business owner who wants to utilize or he is in utilizing social media for pushing up, up their messaging to lead generation to also in terms of building their brand? And how should they look at the social media scene at the moment? What would you tell them? Uh, 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 as a start to this. So that's my first question. Okay. So the, the question I'm getting most from my clients so far this year is what should we do about Twitter? So there's a lot of uh, questions around Twitter right now under its new ownership of the Elon Musk. Um, there's some controversial stuff that he is doing. Uh, he is making some pretty pr provocative um, statements himself through his own Twitter feed, as well as, uh, you know, some political statements that make, make people nervous. So that is the single top question that I'm getting from my clients these days is, should we be on Twitter? Should we be looking for an alternative to Twitter? Should we move, be moving somewhere else? And so my answer to them and to you <laughs> is let's wait and see. I mean, Elon Musk is a very successful businessman. And he is, uh, you know, taking people into space. So uh, we have to have some confidence that he can be just as successful with Twitter as he has been with his other businesses. There's that. The other thing that I ask uh, my clients to think about is, you know, what is your objective for being on Twitter in the first place? So if your objective is to um, gain visibility, to reach and influence policymakers, politicians, to engage the media, to, to uh, build relationships with media uh, professionals, reporters, news producers, and that kind of thing. Definitely, definitely, you need to stay on Twitter because these people are not leaving Twitter. The people that are leaving Twitter tend not to be journalists, policymakers, policy business leaders. It's everybody else. And I've also seen in my analytics, and, I, and I'm working at any one time, I work for about 12 or 15 different clients at any one time. And so I, I have that kind of data, data set. So I'm also seeing in my analytics that there was, over the autumn, quite a big drop in, um, in users on Twitter. But I'm seeing over the last several weeks that, it, that they, in the new year, that these numbers are starting to recover. So people are coming back. They've decided, to, you know, they, they've left, they miss it. They want to come back to Twitter. I think there's a little bit of that. Also the fact that, you know, nothing's blown up yet. Um, you know, nothing terrible has happened to Twitter yet. So people are, are starting to come back. And I think also they've gone out and they've tried some alternatives and they're, they're finding that just not getting the reach and engagement and access that uh, on the alternative platforms and so they're coming back to Twitter. So that I think is uh, is a big question that um, that people are asking right now about uh, social right. media. Right, Shedlin. So what would you suggest uh, them to them in terms of you know a lot of people were talking about Mastodon, if I pronounce it correctly. Yes. Uh, should they be looking at it? Should they ignore it? Should they be just wait and just be on Twitter, sit pretty down there? So I think that you should get on to, you know, have a, a long think about what alternative platforms that you might use. A lot of people are talking about Mastodon, but that is a whole different animal from Twitter. So you need to recognize that from the start, the way that it works, the way that it's built. 
is completely different from Twitter. So I'm not sure that it's uh, that it's a direct replacement. I, I kind of disagree with that characterization of it. it it's a different animal. And so, uh, you know, really think about what is it you're trying to achieve? Can you achieve it on this? And the reason why that it is so different is because of the distributed nature of both its infrastructure and its power structure. So you don't join a platform. You're joining one instance of a platform and you're getting access to the people that have joined that instance of that platform as well. And so, and, and you're interacting with them and, uh, and they are kind of the power brokers just for that instance. So, you know, be aware of that, that it's, it doesn't work exactly like Twitter and it's not exactly like Twitter. And I, and I feel like that's why people are coming back, back to Twitter. So, and there's other, other um, applications out there that people are, there's one called Post, there's one called My Time, you know, there's just different um, things that people are trying. None of them are coming to the fore as the leader. And I'm actually quite confident that Twitter is going to make a recovery. I mean, it's been around since 2005, 2006, and it really is a dominant platform. And, you know, you only need to look at MySpace to know that major major players do fail and go away. But I, I'm kind of confident that Twitter is going to find its way through. Right. Right, Shirley. Now, let's look at the larger, you know, social media space. Yes. Uh, people are looking very closely at, uh, because a huge population worldwide is on Instagram, on Facebook. And uh, also now a lot of, uh, traffic is moving towards LinkedIn, but let's leave LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn at the moment. Okay. Let's look at TikTok too. Now, yes. TikTok <laughs> is being revisited in a very different manner. But at, what is happening is that uh, people don't know what to do with Instagram, whether say, they should go uh, as uh, enthusiastically they, they, they should they used to, or even on Facebook, or they should just hold back for the moment. Even in TikTok, there is a lot of voice in the US about its use, especially there will be certain uh, actions in terms of government employees getting yes. a use, using that. In India, TikTok is not is banned for the last several years. So right. we are not, uh, we don't have access to that. So a largely Indian population businesses and all that, they keep on using Facebook as yes. well as uh, Instagram. Now, amidst this, there is this big thing about be real. So, how should they look at this? A lot of this copying is happening. Some says say that they are copying. Instagram is copying something from be real, something from TikTok, and all these talk. So, how does a person who is a creator, a person who is a small business owner, how should they look at what, how they plan their social media strategy going forward? Okay, so um, so the answer is that there isn't just one answer. You really need to take a more holistic view of your communications, including your digital communications, and think about what it is that you're trying to achieve and think about those groups of people that you need to build a relationship with to be successful in your business or whatever your endeavor is. So understanding those two things is, is the starting point. Um, what I tell my clients right now about face, Facebook and, uh, and Instagram meta is that, um, we should be thinking about this almost, um, based on, uh, the idea of it being an advertising platform, um, especially on Facebook, more so Facebook than Instagram, um, organic reach and engagement is you know changing all the time i won't say it's gone because it's not gone but it's changing all the time and uh you know when you're when social media isn't your main job it's something that you're doing to help promote your company and stuff the changes are fast and furious it's hard to keep on top of all that what you use what you did six weeks ago might not be working now and and uh it, it's complicated and also it's going to keep changing all the time because i don't think that mark zuckerberg and his guys really have it worked out. They're, they're, they're kind of innovating and iterating what they're doing, trying to work out where Facebook is going to be in their future. And so you have to be nimble and ready to move with it. The only way really to work around that is to do paid ads, 
That way you're guaranteed your exposure. You're guaranteed uh, room in the news feeds of the people that you're, that you are uh, targeting and you don't have to leave so much up to chance and change. Now, Instagram, you get more organic engagement on Instagram than you do on, um, on, um, uh, Facebook, but it's not hugely different. And you are right. One thing that, uh, they are doing at Instagram is they're looking at what works on other platforms and they're, they're kind of taking ideas. Like they took the whole story thing from Snapchat and they've taken the reels thing from TikTok, And they're saying, this is what, you know, younger demographics, People in those demographics like to do on social media. This is how they like to use it. So we're going to integrate it into our platform. And so I'm I'm optimistic that um, that Instagram is going to remain more relevant with younger demographic, like the old, under under forty demographic, like fifteen to forty, uh, because they are implementing all these changes and they're open to uh, to innovation. And so, yes, I, I think this certainly for people in your country, um, because you have you know, limited access to alternative networks, definitely, definitely double down on these on these two and, and, and don't forego organic engagement and doing, you know, updating your newsfeed and stuff like that uh, altogether. But really kind of think of it more as an advertising platform and using the paid pieces of it. It's highly effective. It's excellent value for money. And again, they're always innovating new ways for you to engage your target audiences. So uh, it's very, very powerful. Right, right. Now let's look at the LinkedIn. A oh. lot of people earlier, it was just considered to be a pure professional platform for individuals looking for jobs, for companies looking mm -hmm. for candidates and all. But now we see feeds of all different sorts coming in. Now there is a creator sort of a Yes. Profile also you can create and you can go get more traction. Who is LinkedIn for? How should small businesses look at it uh, as how should they make full use of, uh, of of LinkedIn? A lot of people I have seen when they when they thought that perhaps they will be you know uh, influencers also that maybe they may not be very welcome in the new Twitter era then. They, they told a lot of their supporters that, listen, in case it happens, I'm now available on LinkedIn. Obviously, Twitter is a very different platform. LinkedIn is a very different platform. But things are changing very fast on LinkedIn. And a lot of content shows of a different intent from their, from their side. How do you guide people who want your thoughts? So I, you know, I don't think it's either or Twitter or LinkedIn, but you are right. I, I could see that LinkedIn would be a pretty good alternative. If you are committed to I'm leaving Twitter, I don't like what's happening there. And I, but I still want to be able to use social media for my business or for my profession. LinkedIn is a very good alternative. And what you're saying is true. They're implementing a lot of different ways for you to uh, engage. And engagement levels on LinkedIn are actually higher much much higher than you'll ever get on twitter and so um this is a great place if you are selling business to business if you are selling to people who are professionals or for people that have um you know you you feel like they might have the means to purchase higher uh higher cost items and goods uh they they tend to be on linkedin and uh, there's the company page, which is a great place for you to host your business. And uh, it has a lot of different um, features that you can use. You can have product pages. You can have separate tabs for specific, you know, recruitment purposes or, or uh, different kinds of influencer conversations that you want to have. So, yeah, uh, LinkedIn is, they're kind of late to the game, as you said. They were a little bit late to the game. They're, they're owned by Microsoft, so, you know, run by engineers and uh, sometimes not too up on the uh, on the and, marketing the marketing and, part of it. But right. And you yeah. never know when chat, chat GPT can be integrated in LinkedIn as well. There's already this talk going on of Microsoft integrating chat GPT in, on all its you know, MS Word, Excel, and all that stuff. And very soon, you never know, it might have deeper penetration into all that is Microsoft today. So uh, that, that might change uh, uh, a lot of 
this whole world in terms of search as well as the way we are uh, doing our uh, our writing and all on different social media platforms. That's for sure. And so, and for your, uh, your people in, in your North American audiences, uh, it's, it's something to consider. And we don't know what's going to happen with this yet, but uh, TikTok's uh, entity in the U.S. is a, uh, a distinct um, subsidiary company that is uh, owned in partnership with Microsoft. So they have a very big equity stake. I don't know if they're a majority or not, but they have a very big equity stake in um, in TikTok. And so, you know, it kind of, when you're trying to look at your crystal ball about what the future holds, you could see that in the future, there could be some kind of integration between these two platforms. Right. Now, let's look at the role of influencers. And we'll bring YouTube also into this picture because... Suddenly, YouTube is moving into courses. So they were moved into podcasting. Then they moved into are moving into more towards educational sort of stuff. And with course and YouTube courses getting launched as they have, uh, you know, I, I read a couple, a couple of places and it looks like to be a certainty that's the future of YouTube. So a lot of educational focus on educational content in the future. So from entertainment to uh, Edu uh, ed education related content that's it's happening amidst all these things what will be the what is the role of an influencer where is yeah. is the influencer going to go away the way we have known because brands are not paying as much attention as it was in the past yeah that's a really really good question and i guess you know if i'm honest i i don't really know where it's going to go but they're not going to go away because they're always people of influence. It's just how you measure their influence. <laughs> it, that, that, can't, that can change. But there always are going to be people who are influence and have influence and have the eyeballs and the audiences. And, you know, long before I got into digital marketing, I was in public relations and, uh, you know, and publicity. In those days, we went after the editors and the journalists because they had all the eyeballs. We're still going to have that. Um, creators on YouTube and across all the channels, really, that have large and loyal followings are still going to be attractive to brands and uh, other entities where of people that are trying to reach their target audiences. So that's not going anywhere. And I, it's really interesting what you're saying about the coursework that's going on on, on YouTube. I, I, I'm not fully um au fait with all that subject because I, I haven't looked into it personally myself but i do know that the largest dem demographic of people using youtube are students like kids that are in grade school that is their go-to place when they want to learn how to do something what something is they go to youtube and so uh you know having all this educational and training formatted content on youtube if you know, if that's what you do for your business, or if that's how you want to uh, engage with your target audiences, your target markets, uh, there's no better place than YouTube for sure. Right, right. And in amidst all these things, uh, where does podcasting fit in? Because <laughs> uh, because that is holding center stage. The mainstream in media is has its own place, but podcasting is the top of the town everywhere at the moment you are a podcast host yes uh, we have great aspirations in terms of the way we want to engage much, uh, much more wider with wider audience either on youtube or spotify now spotify is more is on video youtube is also on audio it's a podcast so yes. where do you find podcasting impacting social media as such because we are using social media to uh, touch new audiences, but what about the market? How would they uh, look at podcasting to, you know, piggyback in terms of reaching new audiences through uh, through podcasts? So the way that uh, that I help my clients with their social media through podcasting is that the podcast becomes the engine of everything that you do digitally. It is a great way to generate thought leadership content, any kind of content, really. It's a great way to uh, generate original quality 
digital content that can be used and reused. It can be cut, sliced, diced. You can use the audio on a podcast. You can use the video for a, a video show. You can cut it into five to 14 second slices to use on the uh, as social media stories. You can integrate live uh, like Facebook live events as part, you know, it, uh, it's all integrates into each other. And I've just found it to be an excellent tool because, you know, clients are very, very busy and, you know, they're, they don't have the time to sit down and write a blog every week or anything. They just don't have the time to do that. And so uh, my clients have found it's a really easy way for them to spend like an hour a month focusing on their, whatever their marketing focuses for that month. They spend an hour on it. They create an hour's worth of digital content and you can spend the rest of the month rolling that out across all your channels, uh, you know, in, in, in smaller slices and smaller pieces. And so for the bosses and the business owners, this is a great use of their time. They find it very, very effective. Right. Right. Now uh, let's look at, you know, one more thing in terms of there is a lot of focus on video. And yes. especially, you know, uh, small, uh, short form of video, either it's shorts, reels or whatever we can call them. We want to call them. Yes. But at the same time, if you see on LinkedIn, which is a very fast growing platform, there is a lot of content which is focused on images, carousels, yes. documents. How does one uh, see, how do you see all these things? And how does one make best use of these platform? How should they plan out the their uh, content strategy in these changing times? Secondly, second question is, with so many changes happening at the same time, when do you see uh, things stabilizing everywhere? Or all, all this, then one can actually uh, uh, can some sort of a strategy. That, yes, this is the strategy I need to follow. At the moment, it's very dynamic. Okay. Your first question first is uh, video content and uh, uh, the trends around that and particularly with LinkedIn. So yes. we have a planet full of humans right now that have grown up watching TV. You know, th th there's very few people on the planet that can remember a time before there being TV. So we are very... Ha uh, au fait with video content. It's how we prefer to, to learn and, and hear our stories. And so that is why it's such a popular and powerful medium. And because uh, the way that the, uh, the software has evolved, it's so easy to produce now. You know, you know, even 10 years ago, you, it was a lot more difficult to produce a video than it is now. So they've put control in the hands of the consumers to produce these videos. It's easy to do. They're compelling and they're fun, you know, above all it's fun. So, uh, yeah, so video is not going anywhere. Uh, they're going to continue to get shorter and shorter and shorter. Uh, you're right about, um, uh, reels can, can go a little bit longer, but when they're in the story format, you, you really got to keep them under 15 seconds. And even that, you know, uh, my data shows me that people tend to look at you know, two or three seconds at the, at the top at the most, uh, before they scroll, scroll through. So videos are going to be shorter. They're not going away. Now, the thing about LinkedIn, oh, LinkedIn, you know, it, it's such dark horse. You never, you never know with them last year, I think 2021. Yeah. 2021, they introduced their version of stories. They had them around for six or seven months. People weren't using yes. them. So they, so they took them off. Uh, like I, I feel that, they were premature in taking it off because, because of TikTok, because of reels, you know, now they don't have that kind of format content piece. So it's difficult to get your, your content, um, in a user friendly, a, a, a user experience friendly way on, on uh, LinkedIn, but you should still be reposting your video content to your LinkedIn profile or your LinkedIn page because, uh, you know, that's that's the best thing that they have for us right now. People will still find it very, very compelling. It, sh it shows fine on uh, if they're, they're looking at your content through the LinkedIn mobile app. It doesn't look so great on desktop, but it's, you know, it, it's, it's what we have. 
Now, your second question is like, when is the change going to stop and when are things going to level out so that things would be a little bit more predictable and we can do um, um, better future planning? And the answer is it's not. It's never going to. In fact, it's going to accelerate. Change is going to accelerate. Uh, new innovations are coming in. We're never going to stay the same in social media. I've been involved, you know, my whole career has been dedicated to social media since 2005. And, and the change curve is like, you know, in Canada, we call it the hockey stick straight up. <laughs> and it's, and it's never going, it's not going to stop. We don't know what the future holds. You know, there's talk about the metaverse. I, I remain unconvinced that we're all going to be spending our lives in the, in the metaverse, but you know, maybe it could happen. We don't know. So my advice to you and to your listeners and to my clients is remain nimble, remain open to change and try new things and have fun with it. Right, right. Uh, Sherilyn, as a lot of things unfold and a lot of things change at a very fast pace, fast pace, do you think any of these platforms that you, we know of, these large platforms, do you think any might just die out? Any guesses? Well, they're going to change. Like I, like I can see a time when Facebook is 100% about advertising. You know, it will be a shame. And, and this is why they're really focusing on their groups right now and, and, and uh, that kind of stuff because they're trying to keep people on there and engaged. And, and, uh, but I, I can see a time where the, it's going to be limited uh, to advertising um, because that's, you know, that's the way that it's going. And uh, it would seem to the outsider that uh, Meta is using Facebook as a cash cow to fund its other projects. And it's not really investing in, in a lot of innovation for, for Facebook. So I, I think that could happen. Twitter, again, we don't know. You know, Elon might wake up one morning and be totally bored and say, that's it. I'm shutting this down. I'm going to go and concentrate on building cars or rockets. We don't know. It's a crapshoot with him. I kind of feel like he's sunk so much money into it and he's leveraged himself so much to get a hold of it that he won't get bored of it until he can turn it around. So I'm, I'm optimistic for Twitter. Right, right. Elon at least has, has those capacity to leave Earth and go to Mars, but we got to exist very much here. So those people who want to make the best use of your services and, and run their businesses very much on Earth, how do they connect with you, Sherilyn? Oh, so uh, you can see my name here on the screen. If you just Google that word, Sherry Lynn, you're going to find me. I've got a pretty big digital footprint and you're going to find me on Google page one. Right. And now talking about your podcast, Sherry Lynn, tell us what is your podcast all about? How people can make the best use of it? Who can make the best use of it and how they can connect with you on that. Oh, thank you for this. Yes. So my, my, I've been podcasting since 2006, but my current podcast is called 50 women over 50. It is nothing to do with my business. It is my hobby and my passion project. I want it to connect with other women who are over 50 years of age. And so, uh, I thought let's, let's start a podcast and start having a conversation. And so we talk about the issues that women in their fifth decade are facing as their children grow up and leave, as they're reaching a crossroads in their careers, as they're really reaching a crossroads in their lives generally. So it's a, uh, it's a podcast for women and it's about women. And uh, I, I would invite you all to, uh, to check it out. We've got some really, really great interviews. I'm only doing 50. It's called 50 women over 50. I'm only doing 50 and then it's done. And I'm got uh, episode 15 is going out tomorrow. Wonderful, wonderful. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thanks for having me on.